Um, Leo Ridium, the dynamic duo, whatever they are, Dominic McCauley and Jan, they're back. Morning, afternoon. <laughs> so, obviously, everyone's waiting in anticipation for the next year. Of course they are. Um, we're up to 1984, which I must yep. say, must say is fucking brilliant. What a brilliant year. Almost, Big brother is watching us. Yes, almost frustratingly too good, this one. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> too much choice, if you like. So um, if anyone doesn't know the rules of all killer, no filler, total frustration, the rules are you can't repeat an album. You have to choose a track off of, you know, you can't have two songs off of one album. Also, the track listing has to match up to the original recording, rec recording or the album, the original album. So I don't know how you guys got on with this, but I was speaking to Jam just before you come on, Dom, and I've tried to include some bands that I haven't done before because I've got more choice now. Mm -hmm. um, I might have left off some ones that, you know, you'd guarantee I'll probably put on here, but I thought, you know what, I need to talk about other stuff that I yeah. love. So a bit of variety, yeah. Yeah, a bit of variety, but I love every every song. So this is good. We're up to the a cut few years now where I won't have any problems choosing yeah. brilliant songs so there you go i think we have like a pretty good decade from here on out yes yeah, yeah definitely exactly. from, from 84 to 94 is probably pretty good but hmm. after that ooh. oh it's gonna be a struggle but there you go okay. <laughs> okay so we're obviously got we've got 10 tracks at the moment we did talk about extending that at a later date but that'll be when the when cds were on their way more I suppose. Yeah. Um, and then we can go up to 25 because that's how many were on a CD at the first. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jam is going to take us to his uh, track one first of all killer, no filler. There okay. you go, mate. Cool. Right. I'm going to talk about bands who we haven't mentioned yet. Well, I might have mentioned it, but I haven't been in the list yet. Um, and if I saw my, my 18 year old self saw me talking about this now, they, you wouldn't be too happy. Because <laughs> the band I never thought I would actually like. Um, I thought they were old people. And I'm going with Marillion and the song Assassin from um, Fugazi. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've recently gone to Marillion, uh, the fish stuff mainly to start with. Um, but yeah, it's a band I never thought I'd like. But I don't know, I don't know why I got into it. I didn't hate them. It's just I thought, oh, they're not for me. They're not heavy enough. But I uh, really got yeah. into them. And Assassin is, is actually one of the songs I had a best of compilation type, type thing. And this wasn't on there. And this is actually one I've probably heard in the last couple of years. And it's a, it's a fantastic sort of very prog. It's about eight and a half minutes long, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure Assassin is actually a word. I don't quite know what, what I think don't I know understand. what they're trying to get at. But I'm sure it's not a word. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's a great song. It starts off with sort of tribal drums in it. And it's pretty progressive. progressive and um, yeah, it's just a brilliant opening track. Um, it's like Leo it. always what? says guitaring, and I've never heard anyone say that before. What do I say? Guitaring, like you say, well, it's it, the, the the guitaring on it is really good. <laughs> <It's a word. laughs> yeah, well, ain't that word? It is a word, guitar. Oh, well, I mean, it might be, I've just never heard anyone ever say <laughs> yeah. guitaring. Yeah, I guess maybe. it's. Uh, Assassin is actually in the, in the instance you're killing someone, but I'm not sure it's a word. I'm, just, I'm pretty not sure it's a word, but anyway. Anyway, it's a great song, so um, if you want to check out some Marillion, that's a good place to start. A few guys, is that their first album, second album? Second album. Okay. Yes, I believe second. Yeah. Good one there, mate. Something different to kick us off. Kick us off. So, Dominic, what you got, mate? Track okay, one. for mine, I've got Rose Tattoo. Ooh. Ooh. This is the... Um, Title track from Southern Stars, which is a terrific album produced by Vanda and Young, who we all know produced all the classic early ACDC albums. Um, this is their fourth or fifth album um, and took an extended break after this album um, for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> is that um, well, I think they had like reunion shows and even reunion tours, but as far as a new album of all original material, mm. I think there wasn't one until 2005 after oh, this. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, it all went a bit weird because actually the next album in Australia, it was called Rose Tattoo, but everywhere else it was called Angry Anderson's solo album. 
and that's the one that has this big hit ballad from like a soap or something neighbors uh, yeah neighbors neighbors right okay so that's obviously before my time but i know he had a big a big hit with that um so they just changed the name uh, they, they just didn't call it rose tattoo anymore and just called it angry anderson for, for that one album but anyway this album rocks it's great it's a little bit accused of being a bit too polished and maybe dipping their toes into aor but you know that's certainly not a complaint coming from me <laughs> so no, no. <laughs> it's like it's like the best of both worlds just riffy rocky but anthemic all the same um if you're not uh if you're not aware of rose tattoo man they are a really great band uh get a best of or something and just check it out um and see if you like it but excellent band it's one of those oh. bands that was always around and i knew about them like many but never mm -hmm. dipped me toes into it you know stray so many bands like that that i've never yeah. went further with i suppose back then it wasn't as easy as easy as now, is it? Where you can just like, you know, when I no. have, oh, have a little listen, you had to go and buy it. <laughs> it's just yeah, a risk. No. Such a that risk. Is that, that, is, that is the whole thing, isn't it? We, we yeah. said many times it, it was a risk and it was an, ex, an expense as well. I mean, yeah, you yeah. bought the old, we all bought the old dodgy album, haven't we? We've never played since. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. Well, you know, Lee, maybe put a best of Rose Tattoo on your Spotify and you're driving to work one day and tune comes on. You're like, holy shit, he was right. <laughs> maybe maybe mate maybe mate yeah definitely i definitely will i'll, I'll do, definitely do a best of for stars for sure okay mm -hmm. right well you're talking about you dipping your toes in aor i'm definitely going to go aor for my track one are you just going full <laughs> yes i'm going full <laughs> aor and it's their best album for me that they bought out and it's toto and mm -hmm. off the album isolation and oh, the song, the, the song Carmen. So this was the only album that featured, featured. You know why I Fre can't say. Sure. You know why. You know why I can't say that because the actual singer's Freddie Fredrickson. So featuring <laughs> Freddie Fredrickson. Uh -huh. Featuring <laughs> Freddie. Go. Who's uh the late Freddie Fredrickson, by the way, who's a great singer. Um, I, it's quite a while ago now. I think he passed, but um. He bought almost a Steve Perry voice to this album. Mm -hmm. And he, he was seen as he was the main singer on this album only on about eight tracks, something like that. And Steve Lukather, who's the long term Toto guy, shared vocals, did some songs on his own. Freddie did songs on his own. Then they did some together. This was one they did together. And it was really yeah. cool. I mean, the, the, the way they mixed the vocals, because you've got Steve Lukather, who's got a very I don't know. I can't explain it. He sort of pronounces his words very, bit, very sort of like a, a bit like Jimmy Jamison did the way the way he sang. You know, probably people will shoot me down for that. But then Freddie Fredericks, Fredrickson would come in with this soulful Steve Perry esque voice, and yeah. it was just a. I, I loved his voice, and in fact, the only the only reason they they actually got rid of him after this album because they said that he took forever in the studio because he was having trouble with the high notes and singing what they wanted him to sing. But I don't know about that because I heard him on plenty of stuff afterwards and I think he's great. So it's probably just one of them like didn't get on. I'm going to, I'm going to give him a bit of a dig in the press jobs. Probably what it was. Yeah. Well, wasn't this the album right after Toto four, which was like their huge, huge multi-million selling album. And this one didn't yeah. do anything. So yeah. Probably, you know, blaming probably, him for the exactly. success. Of it. It's got some journey esque type stuff in it but i think a lot of that is to do with freddie's voice which was so powerful and that's why it's probably my favorite toto album as well i just think it's great so carmen is a great track check that one out guys that's my number one i actually have that on my itunes i just have never sat down and listened to it you know but but it's sitting right there so maybe tonight tonight <laughs> uh, and also i mean it, carmen is the name obviously i think of a woman but they are the band that They've got so many songs with women's names. It's just unbelievable. Like there that's is that's kind of a pet hate of mine. I don't know why. I just think it's so lazy. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe that's why I've kind of not delved into Toto, just because yeah. there's there's Pamela and there's yeah. all Rosanna. 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 Yeah. 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 I mean, um, if any you're gonna check Africa any was a check, I'm sure. Probably, probably, mate. But um, <laughs> I bless the rains down in Africa. That sounds wrong now. You said it's a woman. I don't know why, but well, uh, <laughs> some, some people pay, pay extra for that. Yeah. 
<laughs> but I mean, if you want to check out a Toto album at all, I'd, I'd suggest this one if you're into your, because Toto hit and miss for me anyway, to tell you the truth. They're not, they yeah. don't get it right every time for sure. But this album is the most, for me, the most consistent that I like. Cool. So, there you go. Hopefully. Nice. Track two, Jam. Track two, I'm going to go to your favourite vocalist and I'm going to Dio. Oh, yeah. Uh, last, last in line album and it's title track, oh, released in track. July 1984. Great album, great song, um, slow acoustic start with a bit of nice vocal passage and then obviously the classic last in line streaming out. And um, yeah, what more can you say? I think most people know this song. Um, this could be my favourite Dio song, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely up there. I mean, track one's pretty good on the album as well. But. Is this the signature Dio song? I mean, I know there's an argument for Holy Diver, which is fine. Well, I mean, which is great, don't get me wrong. But I think Last in Line, just with the soft opening, and then I, I think it might be Dio's signature song. Oh, I agree. Definitely one of the best. Oh, superb, mate. Absolutely superb. Great choice. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, what you got, Dom? Yeah, wow. How am I going to follow that? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm going to follow it with a band called Black and Blue. Oh, yeah. Oh, do we know Black and Blue at all? Yes. Okay, good. This Without Love album. album? Without Love album is this, or is it their debut album? It's the, this is the debut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're from my hometown, Portland, Oregon. Mm. Um, so we, we knew them. They were, they were called Movie Star back when they were a local band. Then when they got signed, they were black and blue. Um, this song got a lot of play when it when it start um, when this first album was released called "Hold On to 18. Um, it's still probably their most well known song, I think, mm. at least in the states. What a great song! It's probably it's one of my favorite um, pre-choruses of all time. <laughs> Just catchy as hell. Uh, produced by Dieter Dirks. Oh yeah, who yeah. we know from Scorpions, obviously. They had quite a career, you know. That's another band we were talking about Kicks before, where this band had four albums on Geffen. Um, none of them were really big hits, you know. I don't mm. maybe might have gone gold one or two of them, but certainly not anywhere. Always a support act, you know. Yeah. But Geffen stuck with them for four for four albums. You know, this one is Dieter mm. Dirks. The second one is produced by Bruce Fairbairn, and then the third and fourth are produced by Gene Simmons. So. They were definitely spending money on this band, you know, yeah. um, and they made some great records, whether they were superstars or not. So, uh, yeah, they'll probably be more back in blue, uh, back in blue, <laughs> black and blue. <laughs> now you've got me with the yeah. featuring. Uh, well, <laughs> struggling today. I mean, they're, they're, they are definitely I've got a, one of their albums I absolutely love. So I'm definitely going to be featuring it on one of my. Is it without love? Is that the one? No, it was nasty, nasty. I absolutely oh, yeah. love that album, man. What a superb album! Really heavy as well, really heavy, like mm -hmm. at the time. But um, yeah, that that is definitely going to be on my list. I, I'm going to have to Excellent. get that on. Absolutely brilliant. Good choice, that mate. Black and blue. Excellent. Okay, my uh, second song probably won't. This band won't feature again. Um, I don't, I quite like the band, but then you know when you're talking about your favourite bands, it's not one of them but there's something about this song so it's armored saint can you deliver i fucking yes. love this song i love this yes. song man good for you so there's something about this and i remember seeing it for the first time i think mtv was about then wasn't it in eight at that time sure um yeah. and there was all these plethora of bands and these were one of them that I had the fucking loincloths on and the swords and shit like that. And the Armoured Saint at that time were like that. They, And there was like Queensryche even was like a bit like that because their EP was like, or their debut album was out around about this time. So there was this loads of bands that looked like, you know, sort of fantasy. Warriors. Warriors and all that. Yeah. And I loved the, that Can You Deliver. It's proper, that great riff at the beginning is fucking, oh, I just love it. It's something about that song. Oh, awesome. And I've never got into them fully, but I I could sort of understand how people are. Great vocalists, obviously, in John Bush. Um, but they're not the most accessible 
accessible band, are they? Nothing's really catchy apart from this sort of song. It never really pulls you in. It's almost like their choruses don't hit you enough sometimes. Mm. But this one yeah, I mean, is good. The, the, the first couple albums, I agree with you. I think they really took a huge leap forward with an album called Symbol of Salvation, yeah. which was... 89 or something yeah and then uh since they've been re reunited i think they've made some really good records they are good the one. they're really good you know but that's what i can say they're good they're consistent they just don't go that extra level they, for they never go from your favorite of the year that sort of thing you know but yeah. um good though they are a good band i've got to admit it but that's my second one mate that's uh can you deliver there you go i actually saw anthrax do can you deliver with bush singing Oh, Once nice. when I saw them with, with Bush, yeah, it was very cool. Yeah, it's a great song, man. Absolutely great. Okay, track three, cool. Jam. Yeah, well, I'm getting to the to the years now where I can, this year, for the next four or five years, I can pull out some of my vinyl because uh, i still got them. So, there oh. we go. Oh, yeah. Rat, out of the cellar. Um, not very excited inside. <laughs> but, yeah, the original one. Um, yeah, and it's... Um, released in March 84 and it's their first album after it don't include the EP which I had on my last list and it's the song Round and Rounds track three is one of the best rap songs I think it's it's one of the big known songs if you like but it still doesn't make it any better than it is it's not overplayed it's, it's a great song probably my second favourite song I think the favourite might be on next year's next year's list we'll have to see um, but um, a great album great song a um, lot of people's favourite album of course Mm, I think uh, yeah. likely like I think we both agree invasions with privacy is better than privacy. Yeah, I agree. But uh, it's yeah. a great album, great song, round and round. Staple of the live show course still. So. Yeah, great yeah. album, great song, great band. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what you got, Dom? What do I have? Number three. Uh Judas Priest, of course, from Defenders of the Faith. This is rock hard, rad free, all day, all night. Um, <laughs> well, it's rock, rock in it, isn't it? They've got rock in it. Yeah. I mean, it's not quite rock and roll, but uh, yeah. yeah, rock hard, ride free. I mean, come on, 1984, fist in the air, that's it. Uh, so I don't know what else to say about this song. It's it, if, if you know Judas Priest, you know this song, and it's it's a stone cold classic. So, um, yeah, but I'm, love I'm it. not I'm not going to say anything about it because last time I said anything about Judas Priest, I got my ass kicked. So I'm online, so I'm not really going to say anything about it. All right. Yeah, you, you can. Yeah, you can just pause. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to have an opinion. All right, I'm not allowed. So. <laughs> well, you can have an opinion, but I think we've we've got it by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There you go. By the way, I quite like a lot of their songs. So, you know, that's my opinion. That's, that's done. That, that please everyone. There you go. Okay. Defenders of the sorry, Defenders of the Faith is one of the better albums as well. I think a lot of people think Screaming for Vengeance is one of the best. I think this is probably arguably just as good. Um very heavy. Yeah. There's some good songs on there. Obviously, I won't mention any in case they come out later. But. Well, well, Lee won't have one, I can guarantee that. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, you know what? I well, I've could... you, buddy. I could well have a Judas Priest song in the future. All right. So all right. when we get to the 90s, maybe. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> with, <laughs> with Ripper Owens. <laughs> yeah. no, I didn't actually mean that, but yeah, I think that's a good idea. That. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. My, my track three is a band. This is my favorite album from this band. White Snake. Slide it in album. Oh. How fucking good was that album? And the song Standing in the Shadow. Too many people. I fucking love this song. So John Sykes, obviously on guitar. Yeah, our buddy John Sykes. Done an amazing job. I don't know if this is just before he tried to sack David Coverdale, I think. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is what I, I think Coverdale, man, this was his last not that he ain't got a good voice after this, but I think this was his last absolutely amazing performance on this album. Loads of heavy breathing all over the record. <laughs> no, I mean, <sighs> low... <laughs> uh, great, he was really, really, he was really fucking horny on this one. 
Oh my! <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> but um, what a good old mate. Fellow, man! We love him. Though. Oh, love he's him. brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! He's just every breathing now when he goes on the stage now before he even starts. Yeah. That's a problem. <laughs> Look around the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With his Zimmer frame around the stage. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But um. What an amazing, catchy song. One of the sort of, I think it was a single, but it's one of the lesser known singles, obviously. But yeah. um, I love it. Absolutely love it. That's it. Staying in the Shadow is my track three. Cool. Flight It In is my favourite White Snake album as well. Thank you. Good man. Good man. Oh. Good taste. Yeah. It's, like a perf- it's like a perfect bridge between the old and the new. Yes. Yes. You know? I agree. I think. Totally agree. Okay. What cool. you got, Jan? Right, I'm going for the, be the first mention of these because it's their debut album, of course, and I'm first. And it is Bon Jovi. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and um, I think I quite like Bon Jovi, obviously the earlier stuff. And the, some of the later tracks, I mean, not particularly that modern now, but some of the later ones, they did the odd track on the odd album that was quite good. Something I mean, like um, uh, there's one on Circle album that was quite good. And there's the, there's the odd one now, but I mean, they're not, not a big band for me particularly but some of the first early stuff was really good and there's some classic albums to come in we, we won't talk about now but i mean this song is uh shot through the heart yeah not to be song. confused with um you give love a bad name for people who are thinking it might be not not you guys but some people might be thinking it's a different song and it's mm. it's very very good it's uh, very it very catchy um it's probably well i think it's probably the best song on the album from what i've heard of it um and it's uh yeah it's got that sort of sing-along single vibe. I'm not sure it was a single or not. It's uh, one I've come across a bit later in life. But, yeah, I don't yeah. think it. I don't think it was. But um, yeah. it's it should have been. Yeah, great, great chorus, song. great sing-along. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, I mean, really, really. I've got I've got a bit of Bon Jovi on me um, on my Spotify, my long Spotify list, and it sort of goes like eight songs off the first album, like five songs off the second album. It slowly, <laughs> sl- <laughs> it yeah. slowly dw- uh, dwindles down to like nothing for the last twenty years or something. <laughs> so, but yeah, that that was a great album, uh, absolutely brilliant album. That and um, it's a shame what's happened to them now. They can't even try and make yeah. a good song now. It's pro- uh, no, and we won't talk about the country music ones, will we? So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the shocking thing is, I actually. I got the curiosity got the better of me. So I listened to the one from last year, the one called 2020. And yep. not only is it the fucking adult contemporary boring as shit songwriting, now he can't sing anymore. So oh, yeah, he can't sing. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard? Yeah. You heard anything off that? I, I was, I, I didn't know he lost his voice at some yeah. point, but ooh, it's rough. If you want to check, awesome. if you want to check out though, if you want to check out, he's really, He's done something really good like at the end of last year. He'd done a cover version of the Pogues, uh, the Christmas song. Oh, God, song. no. <laughs> Check it out, God, honestly. I hope you're kidding. It's awful. You, it's you, awful. Just make sure you play it on someone else's phone because you'll fucking chuck it against the wall. I'm telling you, you will fucking chuck it against the wall. It is absolutely abysmal. And it's taken change the fucking lyrics the, uh, Who did the uh, Kirsty McCall on that? I think, I don't Himself. know. I don't think I've got that. I don't think I've got that far. I'm fucking like, <laughs> it's terrible. Honestly, one of the worst cover versions I've ever heard in my life. I, I think I had one song off the off the last year's album, and I think it, I thought it was all right. I can't remember what it was called, but I thought it wasn't too bad. But um, it's certainly no uh, no shot through the heart. No. So let's put it that way. Okay, right. <laughs> what you got, Don? Okay, on to bigger and better things here. No, well, I mean, I'm talking, I was referring to 2020 Bon Jovi, not, not your choice. Um, okay, we're going to talk about Pantera. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're right. Talk about their glam era. Mm. Mm. Going to talk about when they had a singer called Terry Glaze. This is a their second album called Projects in the Jungle. And this song is called Like Fire. Um, it's just your dead good early 80s metal. Um no shades of any guttural or anything else <laughs> um it's pure it's pure really good metal i'm really pissed that they are so ashamed of their past that mm. they won't release these records like remastered on cd mm. the only way we can get them or, or a, like a bootleg cd if somebody's recorded off that actual vinyl 
Mm. Um, Cause there's some really good quality stuff. And I think it, it's been long enough for fuck's sake. And the two brothers are dead. I mean, come on, let's just, let's just acknowledge these records for what they were at the time. You know what I mean? But um, it doesn't sound like they're going to ever release these, but um, you can certainly hear them easily enough on YouTube or anything else, yeah. you know, all, all the records are on there. I think, I think there's the, four. I think, I think they would have been better if they, the singer changed his name to Cherry Glaze, didn't you? Instead of Terry. <laughs> a, gla a Glaze Cherry. That would have been better, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? That would have been quite cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why they didn't, probably why they never made it. <laughs> I do agree with you. I've heard some of that stuff. It's very Judas Priesty as well, isn't it? That early stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, like 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 melodic Judas Priest, yeah. And even um, when even when Phil Anselmo joined them, they were very like Judas Priest. He sang a bit like Halford, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. There because the fourth album was power metal, and that's when Phil yeah. had come on, but they still had the teased hair and stuff, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, what a great tune, like fire from Projects in the mm -hmm. Jungle. First album is it's really rough. Production and stuff is really rough but they made leaps and bounds on the second one. So if you're ever curious, put on YouTube, yeah. put on one of the older albums and check it out. Okay, cool, mate. Cool. Right, next up. So I never liked the name of this band, especially when, right when, I, was, <laughs> when I was younger, I thought it was a bit girly. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm in England, I'm like 14 years old or whatever. Pretty maids. Yeah. I always thought, uh, yeah, I mean, it's sort of, I can understand it might have put some people off of the band, but they were a great band. They still are a band now. <laughs> but um, this is off the debut album, which was Red Hot and Heavy, the debut album, and the song Waiting for the Time. So, I mean, there was like a mixture of, they sounded a bit Def Leppardy back then. And they mm -hmm. also sounded a bit like a couple of the songs on it were quite speed metal as well, like quite fast. Oh, right. um, but they were always catchy. Pretty Maids have always been a like real melodic band. Um, Were they German? I think they're Danish. Okay. Uh, Ronnie Atkins is sadly, um, he's been diagnosed with stage four cancer and he's just made a debut album, like a solo album this oh, yeah. year, um, mm -hmm. which is really good actually. You know, not just because he's, he's sad, he is, but he's, he, you know, on its own, it stands really well. So, but Pretty Maids are a good band. They had a bit of a lapse, like lo loads of them bands did later on in the middle of their career but um but no they're really good this was their debut album like i said they improved a lot as well over the next couple of albums but this was a great song listen to this one because it's got a real joe elliott bit in the middle just after the guitar solo <laughs> it, <laughs> it just sounds like he does in the uh, pyromate on the pyromania album but i think they're influenced cool. a lot by leopard like a lot of bands were back then yeah yeah awesome cool. all right so yeah, number five Number five, right, I'm going to an old dinosaur resurrected for the 80s. And it is Deep Purple with Perfect Strangers and the title track from that album. Um, released in October 84. And this is the classic reunited Mark II lineup with Richard Blackmore's back. Um, and it's just a great song. I love this song. It's one of my favourite songs. Well, I say of all time, but I do play it all the time whenever I put it. Playing, listening to music of the night, I'll always put Perfect Strangers on. I don't know why I like it so much. There's nothing, I guess, exciting that exciting about it. It's just a fantastic song. It's classic. Yeah, I know you're not a big fan of me, but I, you know, I quite like Deep Purple. I certainly prefer to Led Zeppelin and not quite as much as Black Sabbath, but they've done some good stuff. And this is probably the latest thing I've listened to. I've heard a couple of some of the new stuff, but it's not, not really for me particularly. But this is a great song and a great title track to the album. Are Deep Purple actually to blame for the Hammond organ or not? Well, you could argue the Doors started that sort of sound. That's true. That is originally. true, yeah. um, Dom's looking at me. I, he loves, I, I like he loves a bit of Hammond organ, Dom. <laughs> Are they to blame? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like the solo in like Fireball and that, where they do the, 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 the keyboardy bit and, and the guitar-y bit. I, I, think, I think it works. I like Deep Purple. So, yeah. Fair enough. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, there is a Deep Purple song I like. And not that it's about anal sex or anything, but ain't it knocking at your back door, that one. I like that. I like that song. That's on the same album. Yeah, that's a good song. I remember it because I remember the video for it. Obviously, it, wasn't, it is actually about anal sex, 
with a woman, I believe. <laughs> but um, but the videos are <laughs> but the video is very Mad Maxi. We do want to, you know, we do want to just make sure that. Yeah, exactly. You know, but the video was about Ian Gillen's habits, you know. Exactly, but the, the video is very Mad Max, and I remember it being quite cool, and I quite liked the song actually. So yeah, yeah. good song. Anyway. Well, my, my favorite song off of Perfect Strangers is um, Perfect Strangers because it's my number five as well. Whoa! Hey. <laughs> no, that's, that's good considering it's a year, you know, because yeah. it's, you know, there's a lot to choose from. So very good. Yeah. It's just it's something about been, that song, isn't it? It's brilliant. It's always been just my standout song for Deep Purple. Absolutely. It's, you know, if it wasn't Deep Purple, Lee would love this song because it's like a <laughs> mid-paced kind of epic um song you know it's it's not yeah. three minutes long i think it's what five or six minutes five, um, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just full of mood and um just fantastic great great riff and um yeah that's uh, always been one of my one of my absolute favorites from deep purple so there you go yeah, yeah but there's, there's, there's something else i like apart from epic mid-paced songs and that's good vocalists so that's why i don't like that song <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Ian Gillan's voice. It's just one of them. We know, stuff. we know. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> I've got a really good number five, actually. And it's an obvious one. And it's Dio, and it's One Night in the City. <laughs> Love it. One Night in the City. That real cool plodding thing that Dio does. Absolutely great. Absolutely love it. One of my... One of the underrated tracks or lesser well-known ones, I suppose, but I think it's brilliant. I absolutely love it. Love everything about it. Always have loved One Night in the City. Cool. I'm not gonna, you know, we don't really have to talk about Dio much, do we? Because he's so good. That's it. Hopefully everyone out there has all the classic Dio albums, at least the first two. I mean, yeah. Apart from that, what's that machine one called? That were which one? Angry Machines. Angry Machines. Angry Machines. <laughs> Apart from that one. I wouldn't blame anyone for not having that one, but <laughs> Yeah, that ain't good. That's not good. Anyway, right, number six, guys. What you got, Jen? Um, yeah, going back to pretty much the obvious, one of the best album covers ever made. Oh, yeah. Um, well, four ninety nine bargain. Is this a, oh, we've got a nice inside as well. Oh, lyrics. Lovely. Lovely. Um, yeah, we don't need to talk about this album. It's one of the best Iron Maiden albums of all time for most people. Even if it's not their favourite, it'll certainly be in there. Oh, keep, three, four, I keep, thought. keep talking because I've got a prop for my next song. I've got oh, to go okay. and get it. I've got to go and get it, but carry on. Okay. Yeah, so um, great album. I mean, I'll just reel off. Oh, I better not because people might have the tracks under. But yeah, there's some great songs in here. Obviously, we we'll go past one that we've been up to what we'll we on. Six. So yeah, but Ace is High, obviously, opening the album, and you've got Two Minutes to Midnight. And um, I'll say, I better not go too far, I don't Dual list we've gone to, haven't we? Anyway, this is Back in the Village. I thought I'd pick one that wasn't um, obvious and one that's perhaps the big the big ones I won't mention. But uh, Back in the Village, great, great riff, great album. Um, well, that's what's so great, great about those, you know, the, those first Maiden albums is that you don't have to pick the hit songs because yeah. all of it was quality. It really was. Um, yeah. So you can pick all your all your album tracks and they're just as good and catchy and memorable as, as the as the big ones you know i say i mean i think i think back in the village is definitely one of the better songs of the album surprised it didn't play it on the world slavery tour in, in a way but i guess you can only have well i guess when you got wrong i wish you mentioned show but once you've got the, the long song at the end it's um it takes a quite a lot of your set already doesn't it so you can't play everything off it so but i don't I believe yeah. they've ever played it live they might have done might be wrong but i don't believe they have the thing is, mm. back in the village gets a lot of stick, but if they brought that out now, people would love it, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's no, a far song. Yeah, it's a great song. It, 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 it'd be one of the best songs they brought out if they brought it out now. I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the irony, isn't it? Yeah. Is <laughs> yeah. is okay. Anyway, good choice hey. though, mate. Very good choice. Yep. Cool. My number six is my favorite song by this band. Um, this isn't this isn't a cheat because we said if there's new songs on a best of we can use them. Yeah, yeah. So this is Motorhead, off of No Remorse, which was mostly a best of, but 
It has Killed by Death, which is my favorite. Yeah, I like that song. Mm-hmm. On the motorbike. On the motorbike right. with a bird in his ear on the back. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah man. It comes out of the grave at the end with that. Um, yeah, love it. It's always been my favorite track of theirs. Um, it's certainly not their fastest song or anything, but um just think it's great. Yep. You yeah, all know that, yeah. Yeah, Kill by Death's great song, one of my favorite Motorhead songs. Yeah, it's a good song. It's a good song. Great yeah, choice, so I think that's my first one where I've done like a new song on a best of, but um, there's no way I was leaving that one off. <laughs> no, that's cool. Was it was Kill by Death in a film or something? So I seem to, seem to recall it from a film or some sort of thing, possibly. I mean, um, obviously, it could be added to any soundtrack. There was a film called Eat the Rich that Lemmy was in around ah, the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's probably what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that very own restaurant eating like people or something, wasn't it? Something, to do something that. like that. Yeah, it's got Rick Mail and stuff in it, hasn't it? I think. Yeah. Yeah, comic kind of, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I've got a prop for my uh, my next Ooh, song. Okay. And it's a, one of the few, it's one for... it's one of the few vinyls I've got, so I couldn't. Oh. I've only got I've only got about three, so <laughs> I had to. White sister. Ah. Ah. So. One of Lee Spencer's most influential albums. A lot of people yes. might might not have heard these by this band because um, they only had a couple I of haven't. albums. Yeah, they this was their first album, and then they bought one more album out, and they were both amazing albums. Some of my favorite albums of the eighties. Um, and then sadly, I don't know. I don't even know what happened because they were one of them bands that was really on the verge of like. They've done soundtracks for films. They've done something out of Fright Night for Fright Night, the uh, mm-hmm. original film. They did okay. another song off of another horror film, but they were being used for like, you know, soundtracks and stuff. And I, I was, they should have been huge because they were very classy, you know, in the middle of all these, these 80s sort of glam bands, they had a real class about them. Um, the singer is just fantastic. Dennis Churchill Dry is his name was, a bit of a mouthful. But that is a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. But the song is Can't Say No. It's the opener of the second side. So it's number six. Just, I would just, you know, say, listen to it. It's just epic. It's absolutely brilliant. They are, they're definitely in that glam. They would have been roped into that. But yeah. they just had something about them that was a bit more classy than that. And they're not faith based. No. Okay. But they had I nice, think... nice leggings on. They look like they're going to some sort of fucking aerobics. Oh, fucking right. <laughs> oh, look at that. I fucking what, when, whenever I hear a band name that has white, well, except for White Snake, but when there's some faith-based band that had like white something, White Cross, yeah, White Cross, that was one of them. Okay, I think I probably always thought they were. Uh... This was produced by uh, Greg Giuffria, who's out of that band. Oh, Greg the, the, Giuffria. Yeah. Sorry, I'd probably say I knew I'd say it wrong. You know what I'm like with fucking names, but <laughs> this just adds class, honestly, all the way through it. It's so catchy. Every and the solos across this album are amazing. I think the guy he's he's passed away now. The so the, the guy I think his name was um it was Gary Brandon, and some amazing solos on here, and on Can't mm. Say No as well. Have a listen. Just just that just one song. Can't say no. You'll love it. And they're go. they're American, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool, white sister. White sister. Right, okay. Number seven. Seven, right. Another pretty obvious one, but I'm going for Ride the Lightning. Um, Oh, quite expensive, this one, 869. Just got it a bit later. Nothing exciting inside. Uh, And it's um, the song is uh, Creep of Death, which is a great song. I I actually got on, I did have on vinyl picture disc somewhere but i think i put all those sort of ones away somewhere so i couldn't dig it out but yeah great song creepy death one of the best songs on the album for me um um and the, and the staple of the, the live show pretty much they're quite often open with creepy death actually i think in fact i saw them at wembley not when was it wembley hmm. might be the, no it might be the west ham stadium anyway last time they played in england um and uh, i think they opened with creepy death so it's made stay at a live show and um, what more do you need to say Classic Metallica, fast song, song uh, sing along, you know, melodic as you say. It's just a brilliant Metallica song. I'll tell you something about Metallica, uh, as many other bands as well, and Creeping Death 
as you were saying that about it being a fast song and seeing it live, I can't stand it with bands speed songs up too much live. Mm. And that that's one of them. Creeping Death is sped up so much it loses its heaviness almost. Have you noticed that? We're a lot. I made them do it. Made them do it yeah. all the time. They speed songs up, and I really wish that they would play or at least try and play to the. I suppose it's the atmosphere and the yeah. adrenaline. I don't know, but some if you keep a song sometimes the way it's meant to be, it gives it that real power live. I think. But um, anyway, when I first heard Revelations, I heard um, Live After Death version first, for instance, and then when I heard the album version, it's so much slower. Yeah, than, and it's so much better, version. and it's so much better, in my opinion, obviously. It's a great version, by the way, Revelations yeah. and Live After Death, but yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm like? I don't like things too fast, do I? It annoys me. <laughs> oh, <there> you go. <laughs> oh, God, I could say something. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say, yeah. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> my missus doesn't either, yeah. <laughs> hey! hey! <laughs> you should have done it you should have done it honestly you should have done it. Don't, don't worry about shit like that honestly okay uh, well with, with with my look this would be the one that she would watch and then she'd be like who's that prick then so i can talk about <laughs> <laughs> she won't be watching mate don't worry about that <laughs> yeah because i'm not famous yet no no exactly okay. even though i watched her reaction videos from a couple weeks ago exactly exactly Fine. Whatever, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. Number seven. This is a this is a good find. Um, don't know if you you guys probably have heard it in passing, but this is H S A S. It's Sammy Hagar and oh. Neil Sean and a rhythm section. Um, this was an album called Through the Fire. Now the story with this is, this is right before Sammy joined Van Halen, um, obviously 84. And um, Neil trying to come off of Frontiers tour. So what they did is they got, they got together for like a month, wrote a bunch of tunes, did a two week residency at a San Francisco like theater. So they just played uh, the, the, this new stuff. And then the last couple nights they recorded it. And then when they released it on record, they just took the, co the crowd noise out. Um, and there you have a brand new album, all original yeah. material. Well, they, do, they, they do a cover of Whiter Shade of Pale, um, but the rest is all just brand new material. Mm. Uh, this song is called Hot and Dirty. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> Sammy Shakespeare once again, you yeah. know, <laughs> hello, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> he meets a girl that's really hot. And then, you know, she turns out to be dirty, too. Oh, well, so, what can, more can you ask for? Perfect. Yeah. But it's a great riff. And you can tell Neil Sean is having a hell of a time because he is fucking playing his ass off, you know. You know <laughs> what, man? I fucking love it when he, you can tell he's having some freedom there. I mean, that's what I loved about that Last Journey album. It was a guitar album, that Eclipse. I love mm. the album because he just was let loose. Yeah, I mean, let off the reins if you like, and he, you know, yeah, he's not going. Well, one of these shows. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, but... well, on this especially, do you remember when we were talking about Jakey Lee, where he would fill in parts while he's playing the riff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Neil Sean's doing the exact same thing on this album. Mm. He's he, he's playing the riff, and then he'll fill in all the kind of dead spots. Um, he's but, brilliant, man. One of these shows was um, filmed for an MTV concert in 84, and it's on YouTube if you want to see it. Mm. Um, it's pretty great just for kind of, you know, because it never happened again. This was mm. just like uh, the whole thing was done in like a two month period. <laughs> uh, I think they toured just a little bit maybe on the West Coast, but that was it. And then they just went on to the, you know, do their other stuff. Good one, mate. Super. Cool. Well done. Excellent. Okay, well, I'm going to very obvious for this one because we've we've done a show about this. And it's Van Halen, off obviously the 1984 album. Um, one Hot of my favorite. I fucking hope not. 
I no. hope not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I've got the wrong fucking track number of it. <laughs> I'm hoping it's I'll wait. That's what I'm hoping. Oh, I'll wait, yeah. Yeah, very. I didn't know you liked that song, to be honest. No, I love that song. It's it, I know yeah. it's very keyboard. I know it's keyboard. Good song, it, yeah. it, but I just love it. I, yeah, I do. And this gives everyone, <clears throat> everyone like we said before, who thought that Van Halen before Sammy Hagar was all jam guitars, and it, they were heading this way. We even with Roth, you know. And, yeah, this is the first track to really kind of warn you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cat, cat just jumped off. You scared the shit out of me. Then it's vamp. <laughs> it's only vamp. Don't worry. Oh, he's just opened the door. He's going out. He's going out. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I even thought this sounded like this could have been off a movie as well. This is very mm. soundtracky, eighties soundtracky sound. But yeah, um, yeah. is that a word soundtracky? Probably not. But it's another word I use. There you go. One of them. We can use any words we want. Soundtracky. Soundtracky. Oh wait, what a brilliant song! Very catchy. Cool. Okay, track eight, guys. Track eight. Yeah, I won't spend too long on this because we've done a whole list for this. Um, it's one of my albums. You could have picked anything from it. Debut Wasp album. Um, great back cover as well. And um, it's um, on your knees, which I think I didn't have in my list, but I think uh, at least a couple of you did, uh, or someone did. Yeah. I think I did. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. I think great I had song. a different song, but yeah, great album, brilliant debut album. Every song on it's good, or well, really good. I don't know if it's a ten out of ten album, but it's certainly high eight, high eight, nine, nine out of ten, um, and just excellent. Yeah, on your knees, Moss. Great song, great album, great band again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What can we say? We covered it. Yeah. We had a whole hour just on them. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we did. We did. That's how much okay. we like them. Well, you got Dom. Um, well. I have a sneaking suspicion that we have the same one, Lee, <laughs> but maybe not. But I think so. Um, I'll be your morning after. This is Rat Out of the Cellar, The Morning After, my favorite track off of Out of the Cellar. Um, and I believe that Lee likes it too. I love that song, but I haven't got it on my list though. Oh, you don't. Oh. oh shit! Good. Well, I'm glad I put it on. I almost <laughs> did because I thought, oh, he's going to have it on there, so I can pick something else. Um, but yeah, I've always loved this. Um, I remember seeing them on the uh, when they got back together, like in I don't know '97 or something. Hmm. And I went to their reunion, one of their reunion gigs, and they opened with this song. And I was just like, Oh, really? Mm. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, right. It was amazing. So um, mm. yeah love this album I, I i would say well i can't say i love every track she wants money doesn't really do much for me yeah um, i'm a bit like that I, i'm a bit like that yeah. and i'm insane i don't really like that that much either well i do like that yeah. anyway but my favorite the morning after just amazing it's a brilliant song yeah, yeah. absolutely brilliant what can I say? well even though it seemed like I was going to choose that one. I've probably chosen one even that could be just as obvious. Iron Maiden, obviously. Oh, okay. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I know Do wow. uh, Jam, Jam. I know Jam quickly mentioned that earlier, but um, it's my favourite Iron Maiden album. My favourite Iron Maiden track ever. Yeah. The, uh, I couldn't not. I couldn't not have it on this on this playlist. No. It's just brilliant, isn't it, from start to finish? I mean, there's bands now that are trying to do these. I mean, 13 minutes now is nothing for some bands. Some bands... You mean like, they, you mean like, like Iron Maiden? In fact, yes. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. They, they have been trying to rewrite Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner for about 20 years. <laughs> and they've never done it anywhere near it. No. it it's, I mean, it's got the gallop, the famous Maiden gallop that you know you love um the lovely little breakdown bit you know with steve harris and that little bass line and the creepy yeah. bit where it slows right down it's just fucking amazing this song it's got it's everything you want from a song yeah. um i mean it just not just made is it how many bands now are doing songs that are 15 20 minutes long and uh, you know very occasionally pull it off very yeah. occasionally it keeps your interest all that way but that is just fucking amazing song. My Great song. Yeah. 
I don't okay. know why, but I didn't know that that was your favorite Iron Maiden song of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And my, and my favorite. I was saying this, uh, we were speaking about this last night, I think, this album. And um, I'm not actually sure without going into it scientifically whether it is my favorite album. You know, I just think it is. But sometimes I break through. Yeah, and this song is <laughs> the end. Exactly. Well, I, I usually, as you know, I usually score each song and then divide it by the amount of songs that gives me the average score of the yeah. album. And I've done that before. I thought something was my favorite album. It's not. I do that too. You, yeah. you mean you, you take the total songs on the album? Yes. Then you take the ones that you really love. No, I, I take I take every one. I, I score every song. Because that's how you do in a whole album, and you score every song oh, divided right divide, by divided by the total songs. It gives you the score, and I've done it before, and a lot of the time it works out. But sometimes something will creep up a little bit more. But then I again, you oh, could sorry, sorry, you could that. skew it though. You could have a one song that's rubbish on it, and you give it one out of ten. It's really going to skew your result if you only got eight <laughs> songs. Exactly, so it's, it's difficult. It, isn't it? it is difficult, but um, I think it's my favourite album. It, it's either going to be this or Peace of Mind. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Definitely. I know it's not going to be. When, any, I, do, when, I, when I put together my like best of the year or whatever, which I've been doing for about 10 years now, what I'll do is I'll take the total amount of songs that are on the album. So say they have 10 songs and I really like eight, mm. just a basic thumbs down or thumbs up, you know, and then I'll divide it. So it'll be like, oh, so eight out of 10, 80 percent. Mm. Let's see what the next one is. And sometimes it's surprising because there's because so, there's songs you can love off an album that maybe the whole thing isn't so quality. Yes, exactly. So you're kind of yeah. you can surprise yourself by doing that because <laughs> you're like, I love that song. Oh, but I only like like four songs on that album. <laughs> so fucking oh, hello. No, don't get on there. He's gonna jump on the fucking laptop, idiot. Hooray! Just like this house is fucking mental, mate. I tell you. <laughs> We're gonna have to get some of those Google eyes for the for his back end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Rhyme Ancient Mariner. What I, I would love it to be on the end of the album or end of this playlist because it's just perfect yeah. for that. But um, it's not. So we've got to carry yeah. on. Number nine. Number nine. Um, well, um, don't know how you guys feel about a bit of uh, humour in metal. I, I'm not averse to it. Um, Still paying for one about then. Still pumped the word about that, but I'm talking bad news. I'm talking oh uh, fucking hell, hailstorm. I'm talking um, some some bit of humour, as tenacious D. But obviously, I'm talking about the original one and Spinal Tap. So this is the soundtrack to the film, obviously that came out this year. But it's just all original songs. They very they did some albums afterwards, but this is the the soundtrack to the film and. I don't mind a bit of comedy occasionally and a bit of humour, but I think this is done in a good way. It's not just, it's um, it's tongue in cheek, very funny. I, I, I hate the darkness. I hate, hate his stupid voice. I hate everything about him. I think he's taking the piss rather than laughing with us. Whereas I think all them other bands I mentioned are actually wearing a laugh together. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, anyway, the song is Stay and Edge from, uh, from Spinal Tap. I and, remember, uh, I remember the fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> it complements the, the great scene where... Uh, I don't know what I'm allowed oh. to call them now. But we'll call them little people um, come down and then Stonehenge comes down and the little people are bigger than the statue of Stonehenge, which is uh, <laughs> always a comedy. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's a good song on its own. It's quite funny. It, to be honest, if it was written by Manowar or, or some other band, it would actually be probably taken half seriously. It's just because the fact it is Spinal Tap. It's yeah. uh, it's just a great song. It's, it's, it's been a bit of fun. And um, I actually like it. I like the song. I think it's quite fun. But without being overly taking the piss like a steel panther song but uh, that's my choice at number nine bad news used to be one of the, my most watched things ever like, when i, I was love bad news yeah brilliant yeah. okay dom you well, impressed you know, by you impressed by spinal tap you like a bit of spinal Sorry? tap you like a bit of spinal tap oh i'll just i'll, I'll just um I'll, I'll pass on that one but <laughs> but, but i will say that the whole stonehedge thing is taken from the black sabbath born again tour yeah, with Ian Gillen because they ordered these Stonehenge looking things and they were too big to fit into the arenas so they could only use them for like outside shows or yeah. <laughs> so, so they took that story and they reversed it where they nice. made it small but yeah they, oh. they paid you know however much for these huge 
uh, Stonehenge pylons, pylons or whatever, and they and they wouldn't fit. Oh, <laughs> so there you go. That's where they got that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. We, we got so, number what nine. Do we got number nine. Merciful Fate is back. Ooh. Ah, yeah. The very favorite Merciful Fate song. This is "Come to the Sabbath" from "Don't Break the Oath." Um, you know, I was thinking the last time I didn't mention this, but I know both of you are Metallica fans. You might know some of these songs by yeah. all the covers they've done yeah. of Merciful Fate. Um, didn't they do like a medley that was just called Merciful Fate, and it was like. 15 minutes long and it was just yeah like they just put all these songs together or something anyway so you might actually know some of these riffs or whatever this is a real classic one come come to the sabbath um i i really thought they were devil worshipers back then man i was like wow <laughs> these guys are <laughs> <as> fuck. <laughs> um yeah they they really carried that farther than most bands mm. um but just great, riffy, almost technical for 84, you know? Yeah. Um, lots of riffs going in and out and lots of rhythms and just cool. a terrific song. Cool. Good one, mate. Good one. Uh, I've been a bit too obvious in my last couple, I think. My number nine. Um, going for a I ballad. wish you would stop saying that, Lee, because it doesn't matter. matter. I know, but, you know, I want to, I'd like to surprise you sometimes. I have a couple of times, but I'm going Scorpions. From Love at First Thing and the brilliant ballad Still Loving You. So, I mean, I mean this, yeah, I mean, this was, I actually loved the next album as well. And after that, I was like, uh, but this was their real classic time, wasn't it? This, this album, um, after Blackout, this was brilliant. Then the Worldwide Live album as well, the following year, I believe, was uh, just Scorpions, man, were a huge part, like a lot of bands were of my life. Um, I love Klaus Main's voice. It's something different in it than anyone else was doing at the time, you know. But um, yeah. you know, you oh, just yeah, know, really. you just know it's them, don't you? When as soon as he sings, oh, it, that's Scorpions. But still loving you is a absolutely great track. The builds and builds and builds like a good ballad should, and then yeah. ends in a, mm. in a then ends in Matthias Jabs giving it the old. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Um, Many a baby were conceived to this song. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> that was yep. definitely like basement party. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. That comes on. You've had a few, and yeah, you get oh, you yeah. finally get the lady, you know, in the spare bedroom, and that I think, playing I, in the background. I think it was their most successful album as well. I think. I think it was the the biggest yeah. album. I believe for sales. I think yeah. Yeah. We're on to the end of the list, guys. Oh, yeah. Track 10. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> right, what you got, Jen? Right. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm obvious as well. This is uh, my default band again for what it has been the last few years. Ramones. Probably because I don't, haven't got so many albums, but it's the Ramones again. But it is my favourite Ramones album, and it is Too Tough to Die, which is when they pretty much went metal for this album and it's uh, wow. the heaviest, probably the most metal album they did. Favorite album. Yeah, Two yeah. Tough to Die, yeah, brilliant. Some great songs on there, Endless Vacation, cool. which I couldn't have because it's about track 15 or something. Um, and it's just got some great songs. Howling at the Moon's on here and all these sort of brilliant songs. But the last track, well, track 10 is Planet Earth 1988, which is, um, I don't know what's happening in 1988 because it's only four years later. So I don't know what they're, they're worried about, but... Um, <laughs> uh, <it's> just, <laughs> they're worrying about their career just slowly yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it was by 1988 it was pretty 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 down but uh, no mm. this is a very good album say very metallic and this song's just immediate bass sing alongable song like most Ramones songs are i think it's fairly long for them i think it's about three minutes long so <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a good song not my favorite song on the album but uh, like i said i'm perhaps got as many choices for you guys at, at the moment well, yeah. a couple of years later and then perhaps I'll be more of the too many songs than, than not yeah. enough so good for me Ramones marvellous good mate well done I have okay. to say a great a great album cover too tough too tough to yeah. die yeah. it's just their silhouettes um, with like a big light behind it. it's really cool very cool yeah, in blue yeah I haven't got it unfortunately I used to have it on tape but I haven't got it on vinyl so. cool right what's rounding off right. your uh, 1984 rounding mate? off the good reliable sound from their album Crusader. Mm -hmm. 
this song is called Run For Your Life and it's always been a favorite. Mm -hmm. um, it's just one of those, I mean, they always have these kind of corkers that are just mid albums that um, don't get played much. So they just kind of wrote them and recorded them and then they're forgotten. But this has always been one of my favorites. Um, great, great chorus um, in their classic way. Um, can't say enough about Run For Your Life. So if you don't know it, as I said, it's buried at the, I think it's the last track on the album. Um, just a terrific, terrific song. So there you go. Ooh. If you know Saxon, you like them? Yeah. Bank, bank, bank likes them. Don't you? You like them? Oh, I don't know. But there you go. Right. Okay. My track 10. I'm going to Wasp. Might as well get your album out. Get your album out. Oh, yeah. There we go. What's the track 10? Let me know. Uh, Tormentor. Torture, torture never stops. Oh, torture never stops. Yeah. Fuck for that. <laughs> <laughs> right, get off. Get off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean. I Oh, I love yeah. Scary New Lee. Oh, man, that's just the best. Yeah, I, would, yeah. I would have been all right with Tormentor. That wouldn't have bothered yeah. me. <laughs> but, you know. I knew it was one of the two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just full up with a minute. It's yeah. just great tracks, every one of these. You could, you literally, it's one of them albums, like you guys say, you could, you could just leave it. Oh, I've got to put a Wasp one on later, so I'll just, it doesn't matter which one, it's going to be off this one. What a brilliant album. Probably my favourite Wasp cool. album, this one and the next one. Absolutely superb. But yeah, talk to you never stops, guys. Cool. There you go. Should that's a good closer, Lee. I got to say, that's a yeah, good closer. Good good it song. ain't bad. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. What you like? Some horrible mentions. Yeah. What you okay. got, Jeff? Um, for track one, I would have had. I could have had We Rock from Dio, of course. Um, this the song. The original song I was going to have was was from Defenders of the Faith. It's Free Will Burning, Judas Priest. Absolutely love, I love that, that song. song. Me, I like that. Love that song. And it's one of yeah. one of my favourites. But I wanted to get Smerillion in, so I sacrificed it. Because I didn't know. If, I thought Don might have it anyway, because obviously a big Priest fan. So. Um, but Bon Jovi, Runaway, I could have had track one. Um, track two, we didn't get any Kiss on this list. Obviously, we've done a list on it. So Heaven's on Fire for track two. Could have had from that Animal Eyes. Um, Anthrax from the debut album, Metal Thrashing Mad. Mm. Come up, number track two. Track three, Twisted Sister. We didn't have any of this this time from Stay Hungry. And that's uh, Burning Hell. I like that song. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Um, track four, Fate of Black Metallica. But I think we've covered that. Oh, this is a good one. Track five. Uh, I'm up, sorry, I'm, up, I'm on four, sorry. Five, yeah, is um, New Model Army. Title track from Vengeance. Love that song. But it, I had to have... Uh, perfect strangers in there so i couldn't have it but vengeance from new model army but they should be making an appearance later on in other years hopefully track six uh, van halen hoffman teacher done van halen killed by death i had on my list i wonder if nice. wanted hey. to put it in my motor yeah killed by death from no remorse definitely have that or hellion from wasp and then uh, i can't remember what was eight is it shut Seven. up you bald twat not you jam <laughs> fucking cat <laughs> is that what Sarah said to you as well? Yeah. Oh, I could have been speaking <laughs> to anyone. I could have been yeah. speaking to anyone at that point, but it's the cat, honestly. Wait, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I, 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 I thought he was talking to you, Jam. I thought, wow, I know, how rude. Sorry, I haven't got to there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. Go on. That's right. No, quickly, uh, I would have had Fugazi, the tire track from Rillian at seven, and I had Ryan the Ancient Mariner at eight. And then yeah, that's you it. can't. You got to have Rhyming Ancient Mariner, ain't you? You got to have it. Yeah, you yeah. Have it. <laughs> right, Don. What you got? While well, the cat. Moans. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I I don't have like track numbers or whatever. Um, I wanted to mention uh, Man of War. All men play on ten. I oh, love yeah. that track. Oh yeah, they I had, like that. Uh, that's good. Yeah, they they had two albums in 1984. Hail, Hail to England and huh. um, Sign of the Hammer. We can do that. We can all do the the, the Man of War, Sign of the Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's that, that's what you do at Man of War concerts. That's their that's oh, their thing. Oh, okay. That's the Sign of the Hammer. Yeah. Not more loincloths um, going on there, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure. no, they were doing that. Not anymore. Not anymore. Um, I wanted to. Th this almost made my number one, but then I changed because I did want some rose tattoo. But there's a band that made some of the best AOR from 79 to 84 and just never get mentioned. I think it's because baggage from the past or whatever. Uh, Jefferson Starship, 
Mm. I don't know if you've heard anything. They had some big hits in the States during this time. Um, the, the old singers had left the band in the late 70s. So they got this cat named uh, Mickey Thomas, who was the lead singer. And for my money, he's the only guy that came close to Steve Perry brilliance. Just amazing high vocals. Um, this is the last of the period. This is called Laying It on the Line. But again, if you just get a, a, get a Jefferson Starship best of, <laughs> not Starship, not We Built This City, because that's taken yeah. it too far. Yeah. Um, but some of these songs, Jane, do you know the song called Jane? Oh, I love Jane, man. Brilliant song. There you go. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. what, a, and his vocals on that are just unbelievable. So that was 79. So they carried that, that sound on. They carried that on for four more records and just terrific. I think they really get short sighted when people are talking about the really great AOR of the early 80s. So I want to give them a, give them a bit of a nod. Um, autograph, turn up the radio, classic. Um, oh, yeah, I know that one. I know that one. Yeah, classic song. Um, yeah. And surprisingly, or, um, you mentioned this before, the band Jufria, which is great, Jufria's band, um, made one of my favorite power ballads of all time called Call to the Heart uh, in 1984. I didn't get it on the list, but boy, it's, it's up there with, you know, I don't really like a lot of the sappier mm. side of things, but this one's just beautiful. It's great, Call to the Heart. So Yeah, they're very, they're very keyboardy, weren't they? That yes. Yeah. Very. Well, Greg Jeffrey was a keyboard player, so yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm more going to mention the sort of ones, not the track tracks, but as I usually do, sort of bands that I sort of really wanted to be on there. But the Jailbreak EP was out that year for ACDC. Yeah. Yes. So I love the song Jailbreak. I just think it's amazing. The Bon, I had the Bon Jovi album there as well. I could have chosen a few songs off the Bon Jovi album. Two from now, Dokken was out that year. Um, mm. there's, there's, I mean, I'm I was more under lock and key. I'm I can't. I'm gonna have to get an under lock and key song on, like when we do it next year. I think it is. Um, I had Kiss Down, Metallica, Ride the Lightning. I mean, I just there was just so many to choose from. You know, so many other albums to choose from. I really wanted to put Fade to Black or something like that. I wanted to do it a bit different this time. Uh, Queensryche, The Warning was out. Wow. Mm. I mean, man, I, I just take hold of the flame. And yeah, I suppose you didn't put that on. NM156, title Me track. Too. Just amazing songs. Rat Out of Cellar. Y&T adding Rock We Trust. Not one of the favourite albums, but I like a few songs off of that. And a band called, I don't know if you remember these, and he bought a few albums out, Q5. Remember them? Still the Light. Still the Light. That was their debut album. Q5? Q5. Yeah, so Q for Queen's Reich, five. Just yeah. Q5. Yeah. Um, and they had a great album called Still the Light. I reckon you you both like that because it was, it was sort of almost new wave of British heavy metal with some tinges of that 80s glam sort of mixed okay. yeah really guitar in orientated um and i think the guitarist he had a he one invented the tremolo arm so you didn't go out of tune he'd done something with it he, he was oh, like right. the, the inventor of it or something he didn't invent the tremolo oh. arm because it was out before that but he'd done something extra which all the guitarists would use for the future and so your guitar yeah. wouldn't go out of tune and stuff interesting but, really? yeah Yes. Thank you, guitar for Q5. Yeah. <laughs> so they only had a couple of albums out, and I think they're just about to release something else. I don't know if it's going to be as good as what they released back then. But that was one of them ones I took a risk on. I like, saw the album cover. It looked a bit, little bit Boston-y. It sort of had a space, hmm. sort of right. spaceship on it. And, uh, yeah, quite liked it. But it, weren't, it just weren't good enough to get on my list, though. Just not quite good enough with all the rest of them. Just too many to choose from, almost. So I know when, when when there's a year when you don't have anything from out of the cellar or anything yeah. from the warning, yeah. or, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like wow. <laughs> I mean, it's not. I, I think I could have. You know, they're some of my favorite albums, but I wanted to mention other things. You know, 
rather yeah. than keep, keep well, mentioning the same bands. Well, that's the brilliance about doing years rather than bands is that there might be bands that, um, you know, they're not your favorite bands, but they have a song that has stuck with you all these years, you know. Exactly. Um, exactly. So that's why this is so great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Guys, I had so much fun as usual. Obviously, we're doing this weekly. So we're going to have to meet up next week for 85, which is an amazing cool. year. Yeah, wow. good year. Yeah. Really great years coming up. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I'm sure you've got them already. I'll be doing it the day before. So uh, <laughs> the night before, he'll have like this little night light on. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a pleasure as always, guys. Yeah. Yeah, you too. Till next time. Till next time. Bye bye.